Welcome to Instructional Design for the Ground Up with Ashley Bunn and Denise Cardona. And we are going to have some fun tonight. We're going to talk about root cause analysis. I may sing a song or two. We'll just have to see how it goes. But we're going to do a little bit different format tonight. We're going to do a lesson for the first couple minutes, and then we're going to have conversation after that. And what we would like for all of you to do is to come in and join us, and we want you to be part of this conversation. We want you to ask questions. We want you to offer comments. If there's anything about this that doesn't make sense to you, if you think we're absolutely wrong, put that in the comments, and Ashley will defend it <laughs> <laughs> one way or the other, and it will make it work. So root cause analysis, and by God, let's get going with this because we're going to have some fun. So RCA, as we call it, or maybe you call it something else, there are some four-letter words that people call it, but essentially root cause analysis is the very basis, the very beginning, the genesis of what we do in instructional design. So the first thing that we always say as instructional designers is we need to find out what the problem is. Is there something that we can address? And we certainly can't answer that question unless we know what's going on. So we always do this. We have to know what the genesis of what we're doing really is. So if we're asked to design a course or put together a program, we have to know why we're doing that because we're never gonna be successful if we don't have this basic information. So it's always the first process and analysis, whether you're looking at the Addy model or SAM or you know, rapid prototyping or one of the other 4,000 other ISD models out there, it's the first thing you're gonna do. And also this is a basic part of systems analysis. So I always say that we're systems analysts. What we do in instructional design is look at the systems around us, look at our system for our courses with our populations and content and all the other variables in there. And this is just the beginning of that process. So what this will do, and you can't really go any farther till you do this, is determine what is the root cause. Then you have a basis for conversations about what you want to do from there. And if you find out it's not an issue that you can address or it's going to cost more money or whatever might happen at that point, at least you're going to have an informed decision and conversation preceding that decision. So types of root causes. Now, these are just some of the things I'm going to put up here, but other people actually will add to this. Denise will add to this. So you want to know knowledge and process deficiencies. So do you have an issue where people just don't know what to do or don't know how to do something? That's one type of a root cause. Missing quality. Okay, so if there is no training, obviously it's missing. If the quality of the courses or whatever the cure was for the problem is not up to standard, then okay, here you go with a root cause. Organizational and leadership gaps. Well, we've never seen that. We've never seen an organization with poor leadership or uh, anything like that. But if that's the case, we need to know that because we can't design a course about how to get along with your awful boss. And really, it's not something I would prefer to do, even though I've had to do that several times. Sometimes, especially in nonprofits, you might see it's just a lack of resources. They can't afford to do what they need to do in terms of training and other things that are going on. What about attitude, influences, and population? So attitudinal influences. Do you have an issue with motivation? Do you have an issue with people just don't want to get engaged? Do you have a population that has a lot of informal leadership in it that's taking the reins away from the formal leadership and causing you problems? That can be a root cause issue. And think about everything else that could possibly be going wrong that might get you to the point where you've been asked to design a course or put together a program to address it. So here's where we are with this turning point. So approaches, these are things that you might want to consider. There's many different approaches as our designers, and I'm sure Ashley and Denise will jump in with their ideas too. But you have to define the problem in as much detail as possible. You can't just say I have a motivation issue or you can't say I'm losing sales or I've got too many injuries on the job or whatever. You really got to get in there and find out what's actually going on. Don't stay at a thousand feet. You need to dig in and dig down, find out what's going on. You want to gather everything you can and you want to try to triangulate the data. So what I mean by that is get more than one data source. If you can do focus groups, surveys and interviews, there you got three things you can triangulate. If you can take information from managers, you can have conversations with folks involved in your population. 
get as much data as you can and then triangulate that data. So you can have something that has validity that you can stand behind in terms of having these discussions. And as we go through this, prior just to consider, determine root cause or why. Proof test your final outcomes to verify conclusions. So once you get through this process and you come up with what you think is a root cause or issues that you want to talk about, make sure that that's really what's going on. So have conversations with people that are involved in this. Make sure that you're on the reality train and you haven't gotten out of your lane with what you think is going on, which has nothing to do with it, because sometimes we can get fooled too. And also, you want to offer solutions as necessary and requested. There are many times when I do analysis work that I have no intention of being involved in the cure for this. So if I provide what I think are the problems and provide a list of possible solutions, I may not be the person that does any of the follow through with this. And there are times that I just won't do it for ethical reasons. Um, I've seen too many consultants come in and find the problem and then have the perfect solution. And I have no intention of being part of that train. 